funny web series about these doofy dudes. It's kind of funny to watch them fail. People with Issues has a very particular comedic and dramatic tone. This is more episodic and more character driven than plot driven. I know, it's like traveling the Shire and getting blown by Frodo Baggins himself. Season two is a lot of advancement for the characters from the plot that happened in season one. Stop peering into my soul, you chum guzzling sea monkey. I kind of view season one as like a build up to these certain events in these characters' lives, and I think season two is kind of more of an aftermath. You guys seriously need to get a better name. The name wasn't that bad. It's a really great ensemble piece. Three dudes, yeah. girls, stories, life. Behold, the woman of your dreams. Daydreams, wet dreams, and nightmares. Look at them eyes, boy -o. Man, I miss that smile. F. Oh, she saw me. I met Dan in 2006. We were at UT after college. We kind of wanted to put that film school stuff to use. Dan had shot a thesis film in senior year and it was a lot of fun, so we decided let's do it together. We're both here in Austin. We started coming up with this idea that became People With Issues. So initially, I was going to make this as a feature film several years ago, and we were pursuing it the old-fashioned way. We wrote the script, we like it, let's go ahead and make a feature film. And we ended up shooting a short film as kind of a test run to see, okay, is this a movie, is this a TV show? So, Aaron's got girl issues. What else is new? Yeah, that's really not funny, Darren. It's kind of funny. Uh, no. Your comic. It, it's, it's not funny. I mean, look. That original short film was not meant to be the pilot for a web series. That original short film was just something to get people to go. So, I'm curious what happens next. And then myself and Jeff would go, Ah, you want to know what happens next? Funny you should ask. Please give us $80,000 and you will find out exactly what happens next. We basically just put up open casting calls, read all the channels in Austin. A very, very wide variety of people came in. When you go into casting, you kind of have to throw out your expectations because nobody is going to be exactly what you envisioned in your head, and the best cast is always going to be somebody who brings something you didn't expect. He sent me an email asking once to go do a table read for the script, and I was actually reading for Darren. And then later on, he sent me an email asking if I'd be interested in auditioning. And it was my first time actually auditioning for a film. So I was a bit nervous, but also excited. I'm trying to think about how I found out about the audition. I don't know, I just, I, I saw an, uh, a casting call for the, uh, the season one web series, and I just went into audition. Everything's fine. Mm -hmm. She's great. She's wonderful. It's just sometimes, Oh, I just want to hang her and use her body as a pinata. <laughs> Except with the bat, it'd be like a spike club. It'd just get stuck in her and I'd shove it in further. Wow, yeah, yeah, that uh, definitely sounds like a good relationship there. Good, good for you. Getting the call or the email when you get cast is probably one of the coolest feelings. For me, it's just really exciting about what's to come and the role of Jen was just really fun. Guys, girl, one of the buddies in the group, fun personality. Okay. Oh, I can't get a f***ing beat on the girl, man. What do you expect when your testicles are the size of Reese's Pieces because you're naturally low testosterone? Hello, Jen. Hi, Jack. In a lot of ways, we knew what we were looking for in the character, but once we started seeing these actors come in for auditions, we started to realize that maybe we didn't see this side of that character, and maybe this actor does. And so they bring out different stuff, and I think once we saw Dano and Adam and Tanner get into the roles, it really solidified for us who these characters were more than any kind of preconceived ideas we had. Nice watch. Uh, thanks to you, fellow convention goer. It's Darren, actually. Uh, of course it is. Uh, hello, Aaron is my name. Aaron is my name. Hi. I was just nervous, and this was my first time, so I kind of felt a bit of pressure on myself. Though it was just two days, and it was still a great experience, there was uh, a lot of nerves to some extent. And good luck. You guys suck. 
season one, I had already worked with a couple of people. By that point, I had some acting experience under my belt. And then in addition to that, I was working with a number of the same people from the short of People With Issues. I was kind of easing into things a bit more. Second season was just a fun time. It got everybody's flow. I knew the character well enough to be able to easily jump into it and not be as nervous as I was the first time that I was playing him. There were very few crew members actually who were there for, for the original short film, season one and season two. There were only a few that were there for all three. The director of photography, Brandon Torres, he shot everything. In post-production, Blake Skaggs is the editor. It was my dream crew because they were all my friends that I made throughout the years working behind the scenes as a key grip and script revisor. Everyone that was on this crew, they weren't crew members because we need to hire someone. The crew that was brought on, they were brought on because they were friends that I made throughout the years who just happened to be a sound mixer, who just happened to be a gaffer. That was how the crew was assembled. I think we have two sides of the same coin in terms of filmmaking. Dan can really organize a crew. Dan can get the people he's worked with in the past to come together and really bring their absolute best work. On the alternative side of that, I'm kind of the more of the planner, the organizer, making sure we get everything set up in advance in terms of finance, in terms of logistics. And so I think we could kind of complement each other so that neither of us was so bogged down with the whole task. Weird. <sighs> Comic. <laughs> That's nice. My dead grandmother and my brother's stillborn daughter have comics. Oh. Uh, what? Do you see something you like? You draw really nice tits. My character is named Jack. He's one of three best friends. With, along with Aaron and Darren, and he's a musician. He plays a guitar in a band, and you know he has a lot of love for that. Except for his relationship with Roberta. Like when you break up with someone, you kind of have regrets later on. He's starting to have those regrets. The original short film, we were kind of playing with the idea that she was sort of like a crazy ex-girlfriend type. Season one, I saw her a little more, I mean, not innocent, but just like sheltered. And then now in this season, she's becoming a independent woman handling like a boss. What's up? I haven't talked in a while. <laughs> or are you just now realizing the concept of missing me? No. We never finished that last conversation. Which one? The one before you met my dad or the one after? Because that one you seem pretty done. With the f short film and season one, uh, the focus for Aaron I think, was mostly about his dating life and the extent of his lack of it. And it was more of the comedy of it and the gag of it. Oh my god, are you okay, Karen? Is... is he choking? I, I don't know, can I... Aaron, can I get you something? There's a level of immaturity to him, but with season two, reality of life hits him. He sees the world, basically, in the sense that his pursuit of music isn't gonna be as easy as he thought it was gonna be. His pursuit of women and dating, there was a flaw with it. Hey there. <clears throat> Did you ever stop to think what a paradox it is to come up with an album cover? I mean, <laughs> you're coming up with a visual representation of an audio presentation, and such presentation may not even be a single coherent... You're not listening. Okay. I'm listening. Oh. Oh, oh. Cool. Cool. Cool, cool. Um... He wasn't actually being himself. He was trying to be somebody else. And you see that with this short film in season one where he tries to put on a character and persona that he thinks women will be interested in, but it always falls flat. In the pilot in season one, Jen is mostly a comedic character. She's comedic relief. She is an anchor for Aaron that is always there for a good laugh or to listen and be a friend. And I'll say something encouraging. Oh my God, stop being a f and go say something to her. Season two, you come to find out that she basically is all her brother has and her brother is really all she has. So they are their own little family and you start to see this incredibly responsible adult like Jen. Kyle, you are not even sick. You are going to do your homework. Come on, Jen. Oh, come on, Jen. Nope, time to get to work, let's go. 
Don't be a little bitch. I'll kick your butt. Uh, you're not my mom, you know. When we did the original short film, I was very intimidated by the entire process, period. But because I work in film production, I was a little bit more comfortable talking with the first assistant director, the cinematographer, the sound mixer. I was more comfortable talking with them, but how a director talks to an actor, at that time I had not done since my undergrad thesis film in college. It did not feel organic for me. When we did the web series, I was a little bit more comfortable. In between season one and what was called season two during the filming, I had actually taken an acting class. And the reason why I took this class was just so I could learn how to be a better director for actors. He gives really good direction and lets you have room to breathe and explore things as an actor, whether that's just through like character exploration or improvising. The typical director is like very surface level, talking like, I don't want you to cry here, or I want you to be angrier, like he doesn't talk like that. He talks in a way that will make you cry there. Dan is a very hands-on director. He's easy to talk to, he's great at directing, he knows what he's looking for, he's very good at articulating what he needs out of you. He He's great with working with each individual actor in telling them what they need to hear to get what he wants out of them. And that only progressed and got better and easier and more fluid as the seasons progressed. When we wrapped season two, it was something else. When Michelle Mollet, the first AD, says, that's a wrap, it didn't really hit me at first. And then as soon as I start making the rounds, thanking everyone for a job well done, it just hits me and I'm in ecstatic euphoria. Everyone's happy, we're hugging, and I'm just completely completely elated. It's seamless, it's easy. They make it fun and we've all gotten to know each other so well that it just happens. The machine just works because we have all meshed over the years and we've spent late nights and we've laughed hysterically and we've all been delusionally tired and stressed and all of that at once. He and Jeff, they have this really great plan where the two seasons are connectable into like a feature length movie. But the fact that they were able to do both of those things with one set of scripts to me is like really impressive. I'm super impressed by the work they did with that. 